Hello Dalians of all ages, old boys in abstentia and anyone else who might end up watching this. This weekend at Dale College, we should be celebrating reunion, 159 years of this great institution. I hope wherever you are, you will celebrate with me as best you can. After six weeks of lockdown, if you still have something to toast your alma mater with, please do so. The COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdowns we are experiencing around the world are beyond our control. We cannot meet in person, but the Dale College fire must never be extinguished. The heron must remain strong. Old boys, you will have to forgive us if we break protocol in this virtual assembly. While the key focus of our traditional celebration is remembering the lives of old Dalians who have fallen in conflict, we have expanded this to include our wider community who played a role in bringing peace locally in South Africa and abroad. In the message I've prepared today, which I hope will inspire you, I draw on the devastating effects of war. While not coming out of conflict, many of us and as a nation are likely to find ourselves in similarly devastating circumstances if the ravages and economic impact of this COVID-19 pandemic continue. Before I get into this message, I would like to shout out to all old boys who would have traveled to our beautiful Eastern Cape this weekend. King Williamstown misses you, especially the years of the tens. I trust you will join us for a bumper reunion next year or in August if we manage to hold a reunion then. I must mention the excitement I have to connect with and hear the stories from the 1960 year group. I know there's a considerable group of old aliens from that era rallying together and I do hope to see you all when we can eventually celebrate together. A special shout out to the 10 year group from 2010. I've been in touch with 2010 head prefect Midan John. He sends his regards to all Dalians from the front lines of our fight against COVID-19. I think it is worth mentioning this. Midan typifies the Dalian contribution to the world in this time. A brilliant academic and leader during his time here at school, he went on to study medicine and is currently specializing in infectious diseases. Ironically, his absence is very fitting as he offers his skills and expertise on behalf of us. Fly the heron high, Midan. He sent something short to encourage us as well in this time. Please look out for that on social media too. The situation in which we find ourselves needs creative thinking. We need to imagine a new society, but I believe there is always space to draw on inspiring stories from history. I want to draw your attention to the encouragement contained in one such story today. It plays out in London. In many ways, the epicenter of economic ruin outside of the main Second World War zone of Central Europe. Just three years after the liberating Allied forces marched into Berlin, Germany, to effectively end World War II, London prepared to host the world's greatest sporting event, the 1948 Olympics. Ironically, 12 years prior, this very same Berlin had hosted the previous Olympics. The world was in tatters, battle scarred and still in recovery. As one commentator put it, if countries around the world are hard pressed economically now, Britain at that time was flat out broke. Regardless, Britain put themselves forward to host the Olympics. For the British people and for many nations around the world, the hope invested in these Olympics and their representative athletes provided inspiration, which took their minds off the hardship of post-war poverty. Run on a shoestring budget, dare I say much how we are making do at Dale College at the current era, the games came to be known as the Austerity Games. I'm not an economics teacher, and you will have to forgive me that I had to Google what this meant. I hope I'm correct to very simplistically summarize it as saying the games were run on the cheap. The government looked to reduce expenditure as they restored depleted coffers. This is and was notably different to the normal associate or normal understanding of how Olympics are hosted. There was no Olympic village to house the athletes. Male competitors stayed in military camps nearby. Female competitors were housed in various London colleges. Local athletes stayed at home. And many athletes commuted to the games and their events via public transport. In post-war economy, food and clothing rationing was still in force as well. Competitors were encouraged to buy or make their own uniforms. Bedding was provided in their accommodation, but they were asked to bring their own towels. While all citizens were under food rationing, 2,600 calories per day, athletes were granted increased food rations, approximately 5,500 calories a day. In a move which typified the spirit of the Olympics, 
many countries pitched in to help provide by bringing their own food or contributing what they could. And lastly, no new venues were erected. A cinder track was made by lying and rolling cinder ash from a nearby industrial site inside what is no, now known as Wembley Stadium, creating a temporary athletics track. A swimming pool, longer than the normal 50 meter Olympic sized swimming pool, was simply shortened by putting a platform across it. All other events were hosted by local clubs and venues offering of their facilities. Interestingly, and also different to the wonders of modern technology and the fact that we can do this virtual assembly, the event was broadcast for the first time on British television. However, only those fortunate enough to afford a television and live within a 25 mile radius of the only transmission station could actually enjoy the spectacle broadcast by the BBC. Nonetheless, this new medium helped to promote the games in a way never seen before by the British public. It is not surprising that the spirit of the event is said to have captured the nation. A famous quote at the opening ceremony reads as follows. Your Majesty, the hour has struck. A visionary dream has today become a glorious reality. At the end of the worldwide struggle in 1945, many institutions and associations were found to have withered and only the strongest have survived. How, many wondered, had the great Olympic movement prospered? We know that the Olympics prospered, prospered. Does anything compare with the Olympic spirit? At Dale College, we know all about the beauty of sport and it runs deep through the blood of every single Dalian. The desire to play, to be the hero, to be remembered in folklore is the stuff of childhood dreams. Often more tangible, however, and more important is the camaraderie and passion to play the game to the best of our abilities. Indeed, this is the core of what it is to be a Dalian. And it is with this in mind that my heart really bleeds for our matric class of 2020. We are recording this here at the CB Jennings Field, aka the graveyard. On Saturday, we would have met our traditional rivals, Queen's College. What a privilege to be involved in this time-honored rivalry. I would like to recognize our first teams who would have played on the day, but especially those for whom this would have been their last final reunion. We have rescheduled your reunion for, re for 8th of August, but at this stage, it seems unlikely that we'll be able to be back on the field by then. I want to stress that you are not alone in your grief at losing this opportunity, but we are also fortunate at Dale to know that sometimes the bigger picture is more important than the individual desire. At Dale, we also know about rising from strength to strength. As much as the Olympic spirit did not wither and die during the long war, neither has Dale College through its 159 year history. Rather, we respond to where we are and become the institution this world needs us to be. Who are the next Midden Johns amongst us? Which sturdy sons will stand up from this Amatola Hillgirt Vale to respond to the needs in our society? The loss of our reunion weekend is a casualty of COVID-19. But there is another parallel with what theguardian.com writes of the 1948 Olympics. Despite the air of shabbiness, London 1948 was considered a remarkable success and made a profit of almost 30,000 pounds. Dalians, old Dalians, South Africans, you might be watching this right now and seeing the shabbiness of six weeks of lockdown. The grass might be long wherever you are. It certainly is here. The institutions and industries around you might be dirty and dusty. Ours is too. Your bank balance and your business might be static, but I trust that we as a nation are discovering new metrics of success, possibly a new way to be successful. As a headmaster, I'm incredibly proud of how our staff have responded. We have found success in new ways of doing during this pandemic, and I trust the returns of that success will be significant. As Dalians, I believe many of you are learning new ways of working remotely as well, new ways of being diligent, of being responsible for your time and your data usage. It is only if you dare to step beyond the comfort zone or discomfort zone if you want to imagine what post-war London was like, I mean lockdown South Africa, that you will find what you need to do to prosper in an ever-changing society. We must survive regardless how difficult. We must prosper regardless the challenges. It is the Dalian way. Per audio at Astra.